Today we're talking about Arturia's latest augmented brass, part of the augmented series of plugins that they make. The real cool thing about the augmented series is that it actually mix acoustic sounds with electronic, unreal, weird, plastic, unreal sound. So these two create a very nice mix and morphing, um, especially for soundtracks for film, TV, and video games. And so the choices of patches that they offer you goes into that logic of uh, or that focus to do these ambient sounds. Of course, you can use them in a lot of different ways, but these are a lot of them are just massive, really nice, warm, surrounding sounds. Uh, it's real for the string, augmented strings, augmented uh, piano, and augmented uh, voice or vocal that they have. So this one is brass. Of course, they recorded real samples. So one part of the engine is basically samples, sampler playback. And the other part is synthesis, actually many choices of synthesis. So you can always move between the acoustic recordings and the electronic or artificial sounding part, and it's really cool. What a thing it makes me always enjoy. Um, I like these movement between real and, and artificial. And it's something that um, I remember well from the Matrix movie, the first one where the composer was saying, I don't remember his name, but the composer was saying that every time the human were taking over, the orchestral sounds, the acoustic orchestral sound would take over over the mix. And every time the machine would take over, the electronic sounds would take over the mix. Well, this plugin, the entire series makes me feel like I'm actually doing that in real time. I can go over like real and machine and all the time. So it's really cool. So the screen by default is very simple. It's the just a preset. You load the preset and basically you can just like play great example of what you can do it going from the acoustic to the non so acoustic. Now, around it, you've got a bunch of macros that you can assign to whatever you want. Color is usually assigned to the, the internal timber, the harmonic content, or inharmonic content. Time is mostly used to control envelopes, so attack and decay, which could be something else. Modulation is mostly for LFOs and movement in the sound. Effects B and effects A. A can have two effects, and B can have two effects. And both of them, there's actually a list of almost 10 super nice sounding effects you can pick from. On top of that, you've got the global reverb and delay that both sounds go into when you use it. By moving this, you're controlling all, I think, up to 12 different destinations by moving one knob here. And every time you move these knobs, you also control a lot of other destinations. So we can actually change that in the synth because the power of this is not just to have good presets, it's you can only make your own stuff. Now, like any other Arturia plugin, you actually should go look into the settings here and look into the tutorial and go through this. It explains everything you need to know to use and navigate. And oh, you click here, it does this. So do it once just so you understand how to use it and you'll get the most out of it. Now let's close this and I'm just gonna show you how this works really quickly. So if you click on advanced, you see everything in the synthesis. So at the top, you've got a control over the layers, modulation, arpeggiator, effects, and the macros. So this is where you actually move. In the middle, you've got the information that you just toggle to. And at the bottom, you've got all the source of modulation you can use. So the LFO 1, 2, function 1 and 2, randomizer, uh, velocity, uh, aftertouch, modulation wheel, and keyboard. So these are sending information. You see, every time I play something, you've got this information coming in. And the other one here, the color, morph, time, motion, and effects. And like these are actually, if you go back to here, these are these knobs here. 
So you can also, uh, in advance, decide what actually Morph is sending to. And you see, this is everything that is actually being sent or controlled when you move the Morph knob here in this one. OK, so let's close this for now. A layer A and B. So layer A and layer B are the two side when you're morphing from left to right. Layer A can have two oscillators here, or two sources if you want. These are two samplers in this case. You can actually load different samples. So they've been sampled. They've been placed on the keys, a certain key that you can play. And you have these different sounds. And they've been recorded different ways. So if you click on it, you can actually go through the library of sound that they sampled and put in. So you've got the additional samples are more, I would say, special and uh, from a different source, like Blade Runner sample. If you don't want to hear the other one, you click on the icon like this, and then I only hear this one. So it's probably sampled from a CS80, I'm guessing. So you've got these samples, you've got then the chamber brass, so close, most closely recording, uh, the orchestral brass, different ways to play them, and the process brass, so they sound processed, so with effects and a little difference, you know. Of course, you've got plenty of effects, or reverb, I mean, in this case, and, and ambient sounds. If you don't want to hear them, you can go to effects and turn them off like this. Just like click, 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 click. And in the main, you can also click all of them. So now if you just you hear the clean sound, still you got a filter. So you get really nice sounding acoustic instrument if you want to. And you have these other at the top. I mean, same logic. In this case, this one is a process one, but you can have like all of these. So these two are the layer A. And think of them as being part of a bigger sound. So sometimes some of these sounds sound thin, thin and others are big. But if you combine them, it just creates more harmonics on top of another one. So it has this... this combination that really is cool. That's what they call it, layer A. The layer A already have a layer of two sounds. Then you have at the bottom, you have the filter of cutoff, resonance, envelope amount, which is the envelope that you have just beside it. And you have the filter type. You click on SEM here. You can change different algorithms that emulate different ways of the filter to work. So a multi-mode, a surgeon mode. So it's really precise. You get the spread of it. Um, actually, the spread does not work when you're into multi-mode, just for the this one here, the surgeon. You've got the com filtering uh, with the feedback. You've got uh, the phaser, and you have the formant. So formant for the trot, human voice type of filter. And then you've got these control here. Uh, if I close this, just close this, you have for your instrument, for each of the layers, you have the attack case sustain release, uh, the randomized starts or where it starts, the width of the sound, you want it to be wide or monophonic, not monoplaced, not just phonic, but monoplaced. You hear like wide. And you see that every time you've got these little plus here, you go, where, what is this doing? If you click on the plus, you can decide with a source of modulation. I want to use this LFO here. I move this up. You can see how much well, I want to have plus. I want to have this one. Move it up. Now. maybe too much, you know, go back here, 
Maybe too much. If I want to change the speed of it, I have to go into the modulation, click on LFO. It's this one here. I want it to be faster. Here's this one here. The LFOs are quite simple. You've got the shape of the LFO. You've got the speed, the rate, the fade, phasing. You know, actually, you can put it out of phase if you have two of them. You have the amplifier or the amount of it. And there's three ways to play it. Envelope means it's going to play once and stop. LFO is going to always oscillate. And key trigger, every time you force a key, is going to start over from the first, first place, let's say. So it's always re-triggering the beginning of the LFO. Um, at the bottom, you also have vibrato and tremolo. So you also have, on top of the LFO 1 and 2, two other LFO dedicated to vibrato and tremolo. Let's go back to the layers. Uh, layers, you still have the B1. The B1 has uh, synthesis. So we've got synthesis. Let's listen to these two. So you've got uh, analog synthesis, if you close this. Analog synthesis, uh, let's go back here, like this one. Okay, now we've got Osseo 1, 2, and 3. So you really have just like an analog virtual synthesizer here. Two, three oscillators, and choose the volume of each, the shape of each, the volume of each of these. So you could just use this as a, an analog synthesizer. It's just that powerful. FM synthesis. I find it really cool. And you have a filter, same filter, same logic. Uh, the other synthesis that you have is granular synthesis. Let's see. So in granular synthesis, you have a sample inside of where it starts from. Density is the size of the grain. Actually, if you want to have a whole class on what uh, granular synthesis is, look here. There's a video that I made just about granular synthesis and how complex and fun it can be. But mostly, it's weird. Simply, simple way to say it. It's just fun, weird stuff to play with. So that's for the granular synthesis. There's a bunch of these to play with. The harmonics. Harmonics is basically a way of playing like additive and FM synthesis. Again, this is all taken from uh, pigment synthesis. So really powerful stuff from pigments built into this. Simpler, which is basically a simple sampler. And you can play between different sounds, one after the other. There's loops and all that stuff. And the wavetable, you can actually play between the different shape or slice of the wavetable. Add some FM synthesis, phase distortion, and wavefold. Again, it's a full fledged synthesizer. If you just use this, you have a full synthesizer. That's it. It's just, and it sounds really nice and pure and, and, and full. And you have two of them, and you have two of these samplers. So really, can I change something? Can I just like go in and load some? No, but I can actually move this here. So I could have on one side sampler and synth, and the other one synth and sampler. So you can really mix and match and create how well, bizarre or not bizarre you want it to be. Okay, so that's for the synthesis part. Modulation, we just talked about the LFOs. You've got function, which is basically just a shape that you can design the way you want. You can draw it. 
you can, uh, you know, pick different section. If you click on it itself, you can just move it. You can change, you know, where the knob, the button is. You know, I can change even this, how um, the shape is. Uh, again, it can be key, key triggered. It can be other photo or envelope. So basically, it's kind of a step sequencer. It can be assigned to, again, four different destinations of your choice. You have randomizer. Randomizer is basically a simple and hold, whereas the other one, you can smooth it out and becomes mostly like a random instead of a sample and hold. Last one are keys. So how the key control, like the velocity, F, touch, modulation, wheel, and keyboard will affect the way your sound works. So destinations are here again. And it's always assignable by just saying, oh, I want to control this part here. Click on it and say, oh, well, I'm going to use, I don't know, after touch, and that's it. It works, okay? Then we have the arpeggiator. Arpeggiator, if we have the sound playing, I'm just gonna have, let's load a sound. So we have one with a sequence. Let's say this one. So where you have these here is where it plays. Can have it on two octave, three octave. So what you have this is going to be a chord, and if not, it's going to go through the notes as an arpeggiator. Basically, you can add some randomized velocity. So this is what this is here: it's velocity, and this is the gate. So how long or short will your sound be? So, an arpeggiator, that's what it is. The effects you have, the digital delay, digital reverb, these are the main ones. And from them, you have a choice of pitch shifter delay or um, tape delay here. Ping pong or not, uh, reverb logic between convolution or digital and some controls. If you go into convolution, you can load the imprint of the room you want it to sound like. So straightforward, it works. Layers section, these are the two effects assigned to just layer A or just layer B. And layer A, you have control over these. You can have two of them on the first one, second one, same logic here. And every time you choose another one, you have controls. And there's a lot of controls here. It's just very powerful, very complete. It's really have like having effects processor full flange here. So really, really cool. So after that, let's just basically go and play some of the sounds. So you hear, I personally love all the ambient stuff, you know. This one. Also, really cool sequence. Thank you. 
This is just great. There's a very wide range of sound you can create with augmented brass. Again, it's for, I'd say, sound designers, but you don't have to be one. You just like can take the sound that they have and play with the morph, and it's just like, I like these sounds. Of course, it might not be what you're looking for, but if you're looking for these mix between acoustics and like, I would say organic and artificial with that movement and space and surrounding sound, uh, I like it. It's, it's, it's a great option for that. Like all of these other augmented brass is that, that weird reality of the acoustic and electronic mixed together. Cool stuff. That's it. I hope you like it. I hope this is useful. Like always, make more music and see you soon. Ciao.